<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the graduating class of 2017?
Please rise for the grand processional.
to heaven now, you must take it too. I'm on the road to heaven now, you must take it too. I'm on the road to heaven now, you must take it too. Take it way beyond the blue.
the first and last of man who works like He is King. He is, he is Lord. Jesus Christ, the first and last of man who works like Him. Oh, right on. Rise a milk white horse, no man works like him. River of Jordan, no man like him. Jesus rides in the middle of the air, no man works like him. He calls the saints from everywhere. No man works, no man works, no man works, no man works like him.
We want to welcome all of our graduates, their spouses, their parents, their extended families and friends to Liberty University on this historic day. We are so proud of what you've accomplished and we look forward with great anticipation to watching you succeed in your chosen profession, but most importantly, in your service to Christ and service to others. We'd like to wish our warmest congratulations to all the graduates and their families. We love you and we are very proud of you. Hi, this is Pastor David, and I wanted to say congratulations. Obviously, all of our graduates are going to get pretty used to hearing that today, but I wanted to especially say congratulations to the moms and dads, brothers and sisters, and all the communities that are represented here who actually have come not just to celebrate the great hard work of every graduate, but honestly, you. It has taken the entire village to see this cap and gown moment. And so thank you for supporting. Thank you for working extra hours. Thank you for the prayers and the dedication, all the hard work that has gone into seeing this day come into fruition. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell, and the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump.
Would you remain standing for an opening word of prayer? And after prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem. Let's pray. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We stand in great respect and reverence of your majestic name, the name that is above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for these special graduates. We thank you for friends and loved ones, both here and abroad, who offer their support for these special graduates on this very special day. We thank you for Liberty University, who strives daily to develop Christ-centered men and women with the values, knowledge, and skills essential to impact the world. An institution that loves God, loves country, and loves those sworn to defend her. But most of all, we are grateful for your holy word and the promises therein. We're thankful for the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his precious, special, only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come upon this earth to live a sinless life, to die a crucifixion, buried, and rise again three days later to conquer sin and death and offer salvation to whoever will call upon the name of the Lord. For whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We pray that you are pleased with what you hear. We pray for your blessing upon this ceremony, and we pray in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Sounds of Liberty. Please be seated. Today, we would like to honor one of our alumni, Daniel Yan Nui. Last night, we honored Wallace and Eleanor Turnbull, who have served as missionaries to Haiti for over 70 years, and they were provided numerous scholarships for Haitian young people to attend Liberty University. Daniel received the Turnbull Leadership Program Scholarship, and he came to Liberty. Graduating in 2006 with a degree in business administration and leadership, Daniel grew up among peasant families who practiced voodoo in Haiti's western forests and salt flats. He co-founded Bridge Capital, the first small and medium enterprise investment firm in Haiti, with the goal of creating 100,000 new jobs by the year 2020. 
Additionally, he has been a professor of entrepreneurship and development at two universities in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. In March 2016, he published his first book, From Aid to Trade, on the role of aid versus private investment in economic development. He believes the only way to end the global cycle of poverty is to empower people to meet their own needs profitably and sustainably. As he said in the docu documentary, Poverty Incorporated, no one wants to be a beggar for life. Like President Trump, Daniel believes that jobs, not government handouts, are the only real pathway out of poverty. He has become a highly sought-after consultant for his intelligence, character, and unprecedented accomplishments, and was recently featured in Forbes magazine. He is recognized internationally as an expert on issues regarding the role of business in eliminating poverty, and has spoken in over 15 different countries. We are proud today to say that he represents Liberty University in all of these places. Daniel Yin, John Louis, would you please join President Falwell and me here at the podium? In recognition of Daniel Yin Louis' work and tireless commitment to end poverty in his homeland through entrepreneurial endeavors and job creation. With the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Business is hereby conferred upon Daniel Yin Louis with all the rights and privileges appertaining, appertaining thereunto. I want to welcome LU Praise. They were the group from Liberty who performed at the Washington Cathedral at the inauguration. And now they're going to perform the same number, but I don't see them. There they are. All right. Okay. It's all yours. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you, and I want you to join me in welcoming to the podium the President of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell. Good morning. It's my privilege and honor to officially welcome all of you to Liberty University's 44th Annual Commencement Exercises. I apologize for the computer glitch, but that's technology, sorry about that. Today, we will confer nearly 19,000 degrees and will make history by welcoming a sitting U.S. president to campus. This is... This is by far the largest attendance we've ever had at commencement. Our, our previous record was around 36, 38,000. Today, they tell me we have over 50,000. And so, but 
We, this has only happened once before when President George H.W. Bush, for, this is only the second time a sitting president has spoken at Liberty. George H.W. Bush, Bush was our speaker in, in, on May 12, 1990, but Notre Dame has had a tradition the last few, University of Notre Dame has had a tradition the last few generations to have the sitting president or the new president to deliver his first commencement address at Notre Dame. We've always respected and, and, and admired Notre Dame University. And in fact, from our very beginnings, we aspired to be for evangelical young people what Notre Dame is for Catholic young people. Well, I'm proud to say today that the President of the United States chose to deliver his first commencement address, not at Notre Dame, but at Liberty University. I want to begin by recognizing our guests of honor, the class of 2017. Would all of our graduates please stand? We're so proud of you and thank God for each one of you. Please remain standing. Do not take this achievement lightly. You have earned this honor. Your years of hard work, sacrifice, and dedication have made this day a reality. It has been a genuine privilege for me and all the faculty and staff to serve you and to be part of your lives. Congratulations, graduates. You may be seated. Four thousand nine hundred and sixty-eight members of the class of 2017 are graduating with honors. Eleven hundred and forty-seven are graduating with a perfect 4.0 GPA. I know firsthand how much work, dedication, and sacrifice was requ required for you to achieve so much academically, and I salute you for this incredible achievement. Online students represent 85% of this year's graduating class. You are a picture of the American dream and a picture of the future of higher education in America. You did what you needed in order to get a job or start a family, and then you wanted to go further, so you took classes online at night, on the weekends, after the kids went to bed. You worked hard, you studied hard, you turned your dreams into reality, and you have much to be proud of today. At this point, I would like to direct your attention to five empty chairs on the front row draped in regalia. We are awarding five posthumous graduates to the following, following persons. I'm sorry, posthumous degrees to the following graduates. First, Doris Walker, Richard Fortner, Skylar Spencer, Benjamin Worthington, and Timothy Adams. The families of these recently deceased graduates are here with us. Would the families please stand? Fam family members, Few here can imagine the pain that you feel, but take comfort in knowing that your Liberty, fam your Liberty family is praying for you. We thank God for the legacy of your loved ones and for the lives they touched. This week is the 10th anniversary of my father's sudden passing in his office at age 73. My father would find a way to weave into every speech and every sermon the admonition that students should never quit and never give up. Dad loved to quote Winston Churchill, who said, success is going from failure to failure with undiminished enthusiasm. My father often said a man's greatness is not determined by his talent or by his wealth, but rather by what it takes to discourage him. Graduates, you will face seemingly insurmountable hardships and obstacles often throughout your career. At times, everything will seem hopeless and every fiber of your being will be screaming for you to quit and give up on your dreams. 
but persevering in those darkest hours is what separates the winners from the losers. Only if you press on will you achieve greatness. Just as President Trump had a close relationship with his father, my father and I were very close. When he, when he passed away suddenly, I, I not only had to deal with the grief of losing someone who had been a great father, with whom I had worked daily for 20 years and had traveled with as a child as he went from town to town spreading the news about this newly founded college. But I also had to step into a public role that was completely outside my comfort zone. The stress of dealing with all that at once was almost unbearable, but when I look around today, I am so glad that I heeded my father's advice and did not throw in the towel and quit. The class of 2017 has studied under godly professors and spiritual leaders on campus. You have learned not just how to make a living, but also how to live. You have learned from the teachings of Jesus to live your lives by the great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbors as yourselves. As a student body, you worked with NBA star Steph Curry to send over 20,000 pairs of shoes to people in the Congo. You helped hurricane and tornado victims in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Georgia, and you volunteered over 950,000 hours lo locally to help those in need. Winston Churchill said, you make a living by what you earn, but you make a life by what, by what you give. Christians often overlook the fact that in order to give and to serve others, you need resources, and you need to be successful in your own careers first. Creating employment is one of the most effective ways of serving others. Liberty's mission is to train young people to succeed in every profession and to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. When you begin your career, remember that nothing can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. When I was growing up, my father had a speech by legendary Green Bay Packers coach Vince Lombardi on his office wall entitled, What It Takes to Be Number One. Vince Lombardi won the Super Bowl more times than any other coach even before it was called the Super Bowl. The speech ended with this, I believe in God and I believe in human decency, but I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, his greatest fulfillment to all he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle victorious. That was November 8th for you, wasn't it, Mr. President? Yeah. But. <laughs> Michael Jordan said, I've failed over and over again in my life, and that, that is why I succeed. John Rockefeller said, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. And I've always appreciated Pink Floyd's words of wisdom. <laughs> Don't exchange a walk-on part in the war for a lead role in a cage. Don't, you'll have to think about that one for a minute. But, but the class of 2017, I hope you will never forget these principles that we have been so passionate about for decades. And right now, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you a man who has lived his life according to these same principles of perseverance and never quitting. President Donald J. Trump is a man who I greatly admire and who I am proud to call my friend and my president. He is a man who speaks the plain, common-sense truth, a man who has succeeded in business and in politics, defying conventional wisdom to become the 45th president of the United States as a champion of the average American citizen, including many who felt forgotten and neglected by the establishment. Since his election, I have noticed a new hope and a new optimism sweeping this country. As a country, we needed fresh and bold leadership. President Trump's love for his ordinary Americans and his kindness, generosity, and bold leadership qualities made him the best candidate for the job. Trump Mr. Trump possesses the resolve to put his country first and to never give up in a world that is increasingly hostile to our values. Instead of another professional politician, the American voters wisely chose a successful businessman to lead this country. But Donald Trump offers more than just business acumen. 
He's a man with wonderful and successful children who love their father, a man who is personable and who actually relates to the common man. President Trump was willing to risk his business empire, his comfortable lifestyle, his reputation, and his family was willing to sacrifice their privacy, all for the country they loved and for the benefit of the American people. President Trump's actions in the last four months speak for themselves. He reaffirmed this nation's support for the state of Israel. He appointed a conservative, strict constructionist, pro-life justice to the Supreme Court. He appointed more men He appointed more men and women of faith to his cabinet than any president in recent memory. He bombed those in the Middle East who were persecuting and killing Christians. And earlier he chose Mike And earlier he chose Mike Pence as his running mate. And just last week, he signed an executive order in the Rose Garden fulfilling a promise to return political free speech rights to churches, religious leaders and universities like this one. Repealing the Johnson Amendment was the first issue he mentioned to me at the beginning of, of his campaign, and last week he proved that he is a man of his word. I do not believe that any president in our lifetimes has done so much that has benefited the Christian community in such a short time span than Donald Trump. President Trump ventured into politics at a time when our nation has never been more polarized, he deserves our respect and admiration for enduring relentless and often dishonest attacks from the media, the establishment on the left and the right, and from academia. President Trump's attackers need to heed the words of Thomas Jefferson, who lived here in Central Virginia. He said, I never considered a difference of opinion in politics, in religion, or in philosophy as cause of withdrawing from a friend. Our president's enemies need to once again begin practicing the tolerance that they so often preach. President Trump and Dr. Hawkins, please join me at the podium. In, re in recognition of President Trump's commitment to his country and to the citizens who have been forgotten by their own government and for his unwavering determination to make America great again, and an acknowledgement of his bold leadership of our nation with the powers vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University. The Doctorate of Laws degree is hereby conferred upon President Donald J. Trump with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Now to deliver our 44th commencement address, join with me in welcoming back to Liberty University, President Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much, everybody. And congratulations to the class of 2017. That's some achievement. This is your day, and you've earned every minute of it. And I'm thrilled to be back at Liberty University. I've been here. This is now my third time. And we love setting records, right? We always set records. We have to set records. We have no choice. It's been a little over a year since I've spoken on your beautiful campus, and so much has changed. Right here, the class of 2017, dressed in cap and gown, graduating to a totally brilliant future. And here I am, standing before you as President of the United States. So I'm guessing there are some people here today who thought that either one of those things. Either one. 
would really require major help from God. Do we agree? And we got it. But here we are celebrating together on this very joyous occasion. And there is no place in the world I'd rather be to give my first commencement address as president than here with my wonderful friends at Liberty University. And And I accepted this invitation a long time ago. I said to Jerry that I'd be there. And when I say something, I mean it. I want to thank President Jerry Falwell and his incredible wife, Becky. Stand up, Becky. For their kind words, their steadfast support, and their really wonderful friendship. Let me also extend our appreciation to the entire Falwell family. Trey, Sarah, Wesley, Laura, and Caroline, thank you for everything you do to make this university so exceptional. One of the truly great, great schools. Most importantly to our new graduates, each of you should take immense pride in what you have achieved. There's another group of amazing people we want to celebrate today, and they are the ones who have made this journey possible for you. And you know who that is? Nobody. You forgot already. You're going to go out. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. Some are going to make a lot of money. Some are going to be even happier doing other things. They're your parents and your grandparents. Don't forget them. You haven't forgotten yet, have you? Never, ever forget them. They're great. And especially this weekend, let's make sure we give a really extra special thanks to the moms. Don't forget our moms, because graduates, today is your day. Today is your day. But in all of this excitement, don't forget that tomorrow is Mother's Day, right? I had a great mother. She's looking down now, but I had a great mother. I always loved Mother's Day. We're also deeply honored to be joined by some of the nearly 6,000 service members, military veterans, and military spouses who are receiving their diplomas today. Would you please stand? Please stand. Wow. That's great. Thank you very much. Great job. We're profoundly grateful to every single one of you who sacrificed to keep us safe and to protect God's precious gift of freedom. It is truly a testament to this university and to the values that you embrace that your graduating class includes so many patriots who have served our country in uniform. Thank you very much. To the class of 2017, today you end one chapter, but you are about to begin the greatest adventure of your life. Just think for a moment of how blessed you are to be here today at this great, great university, living in this amazing country, surrounded by people who you love and care about so much. Then ask yourself, with all of those blessings and all of the blessings that you've been given, what will you give back to this country and, indeed, to the world? What imprint will you leave in the sands of history? What will future Americans say we did in our brief time right here on Earth? Did we take risks? Did we dare to defy expectations? Did we challenge accepted wisdom and take on established systems? I think I did, but we all did, and we're all doing it. Or did we just go along with convention, swim downstream so easily with the current, and just give in because it was the easy way, it was the traditional way, 
or it was the accepted way. Remember this, nothing worth doing ever, ever, ever came easy. Following your convictions means you must be willing to face criticism from those who lack the same courage to do what is right, and they know what is right, but they don't have the courage or the guts or the stamina to take it and to do it. It's called the road less traveled. I know that each of you will be a warrior for the truth, will be a warrior for our country and for your family. I know that each of you will do what is right, not what is the easy way, and that you will be true to yourself and your country and your beliefs. In my short time in Washington, I've seen firsthand how the system is broken. A small group of failed voices who think they know everything and understand everyone want to tell everybody else how to live and what to do and how to think. But you aren't going to let other people tell you what you believe, especially when you know that you're right. And those of you graduating here today who have given half a million hours of charity last year alone, unbelievable amount of work and charity, and few universities or colleges can claim anything even close. We don't need a lecture from Washington on how to lead our lives. I'm standing here looking at the next generation of American leaders. There may very well be a president or two in our midst. Anybody think they're going to be president? Raise your hand. <laughs> in your hearts are inscribed the values of service, sacrifice, and devotion. Now you must go forth into the world and turn your hopes and dreams into action. America has always been the land of dreams because America is a nation of true believers. When the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, they prayed. When the founders wrote the Declaration of, of Independence, they invoked our Creator four times. Because in America, we don't worship government, we worship God. That is why our elected officials put their hands on the Bible and say, so help me God, as they take the oath of office. It is why our currency proudly declares, in God we trust. And it's why we proudly proclaim that we are one nation under God every time we say the Pledge of Allegiance. The story of America is the story of an adventure that began with deep faith, big dreams, and humble beginnings. That is also the story of Liberty University. When I think about the visionary founder of this great institution, Reverend Jerry Falwell Sr., I can only imagine how excited he would be if he could see all of this and all of you today, and how proud he would be of his son and of his family. In just two days, we will mark the 10th anniversary of Reverend Falwell's passing. And I used to love watching him on television, hearing him preach. He was a very special man. He would be so proud, not just at what you've achieved, but of the young men and women of character that you've all become. And Jerry, I know your dad is looking down on you right now, 
And he is proud. He is very proud. So, congratulations on a great job, Jerry. Reverend Falwell's life is a testament to the power of faith to change the world. The inspiring legacy that we see all around us in this great stadium. This is a beautiful stadium, and it is packed. I'm so happy about that. I said, how are you going to fill up a place like that? It is packed, Jerry. In this beautiful campus, and in your smiling faces. But it all began with a vision. That vision was of a world-class university for evangelical Christians. And I want to thank you because, boy, did you come out and vote, those of you that are old enough. In other words, your parents. Boy, oh boy, you voted. You voted. No doubt many people told him his vision wasn't possible. And I am sure they continued to say that so long after he started, at the beginning with just 154 students. But the fact is, no one has ever achieved anything significant without a chorus of critics standing on the sidelines explaining why it can't be done. Nothing is easier or more pathetic than being a critic, because they're people that can't get the job done. But the future belongs to the dreamers, not to the critics. The future belongs to the people who follow their heart no matter what the critics say, because they truly believe in their vision. At Liberty, your leaders knew from the very beginning that a strong athletic program would help this campus grow so that this school might transform more lives. That is why a crucial part of Reverend Falwell's vision for making Liberty a world-class institution was having a world-class football team, much like the great teams of Notre Dame. Great school, great place. In fact, Vice President Mike Pence is there today doing a fabulous job, as he always does. A few years ago, the New York Times even wrote a story on the great ambitions of the Liberty Flames. That story prompted a longtime president of another school to write a letter to Jerry. It's a letter that Reverend Falwell would have been very, very pleased to read. Jerry tells me that letter now hangs in the wall in the boardroom of your great university. It came from the late father, Theodore Hesburgh, who was the beloved president of the University of Notre Dame 35 years ago. Like this school's founder, he was a truly kind-hearted man of very, very deep faith. In the letter, Father Hesburgh recalled that Notre Dame's own meteoric rise from a small Midwestern school to a national football powerhouse. And then he wrote something so amazing and generous. He wrote, I think you are on that same trajectory now, and I want to wish you all the best and encourage you from the starting and from being able to start very small and arriving in the big time. Thanks to hard work, great faith, and incredible devotion, those dreams have come true. As of February of this year, the Liberty Flames are playing in the FBS, the highest level of competition in NCAA football. Don't, don't clap. That could be tough. Don't clap. That could be tough. I'm a little worried. I don't want to look at some of those scores here. Jerry, are you sure you know what you're doing here? Those other players are big and fast and strong, but I have a feeling you're going to do very well, right? From the most humble roots, you've become a powerhouse in both education and sports. And just wait until the world hears the football teams you'll be playing on your schedule starting next season. President Falwell gave me a list of some of those schools. 
the ones you're going to be playing. 2018. Would you like me to read the names just came out? Would you like to hear them? I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> UMass. Virginia. Auburn. Jerry, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Jerry, Auburn. I don't know about that, James. This, this could be trouble, Jerry. Rutgers. Old Dominion. Brigham Young. Army. I might be at that game. Who am I supposed to root for? Tell me. I don't know. That's a tough one, Jerry. I don't know, Jerry. I'm going to have to think about that one, Jerry. Buffalo. Troy. Virginia Tech. Oh, no, Jerry. Ole Miss. And Wake Forest. Those are really top schools. That's — maybe in four or five years, I'll come to a game, right? You'll build it up. With. <laughs> Well, good luck. The success of your athletic program arriving on the big stage should be a reminder to every new graduate of just what you can achieve when you start small, pursue a big vision, and never, ever quit. You never quit. If I give you one message to hold in your hearts today, it's this. Never, ever give up. There'll be times in your life you'll want to quit, you'll want to go home, you want to go home, perhaps, to that wonderful mother that's sitting back there watching you and say, Mom, I can't do it. I can't do it. Just never quit. Go back home and tell Mom, Dad, I can do it. I can do it. I will do it. You're going to be successful. I've seen so many brilliant people. They gave up in life. They were totally brilliant. They were top of their class. They were the best students. They were the best of everything. They gave up. I've seen others who really didn't have that talent or that ability, and they're among the most successful people today in the world because they never quit and they never gave up. So just remember that. Never stop fighting for what you believe in and for the people who care about you. Carry yourself with dignity and pride. Demand the best from yourself and be totally unafraid to challenge entrenched interests and failed power structures. Does that sound familiar, by the way? <laughs> the more people tell you it's not possible, that it can't be done, the more you should be absolutely determined to prove them wrong. Treat the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. Relish the opportunity to be an outsider. Embrace that label. Being an outsider is fine. Embrace the label. Because it's the outsiders who change the world and who make a real and lasting difference. The more that a broken system tells you that you're wrong, the more certain you should be that you must keep pushing ahead. You must keep pushing forward. And always have the courage to be yourself. Most importantly, you have to do what you love. You have to do what you love. I've seen so many people, they're forced through lots of reasons, sometimes including family, to go down a path that they don't want to go down, to go down a path that leads them to something that they don't love that they don't enjoy. You have to do what you love, or you most likely won't be very successful at it. So do what you love. I want to recognize a friend who is here with us today who can serve as an inspiration to us all, someone who doesn't know the meaning of the word quit, real champion, a true, true champion, both on the field off the field. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Really a good friend of mine, an amazing guy, Jim Kelly. Where's Jim? He's here someplace. Where's Jim? Stand up, Jim. What a great man, Jim Kelly. He was tough. Jim, do you have any idea how much money you'd be making today? 
They'd hit Jim, it was like tackling a linebacker. They'd hit Jim, four guys, five guys that weighed 320, and he'd just keep going down the field. He was much more than a quarterback. He had tremendous heart, and he knew how to win. Jim is tough, and his toughest fight of all was that he beat cancer not once, but twice. And I saw him and his incredible wife as they were in a very low moment. Jill, very, very low moment. And uh, it was amazing the way they fought. It didn't look good. I would have said, maybe, maybe it's not going to happen. But there was always that hope because of Jim and Jim's heart. But I want to just uh, say it's great to have you here today, Jim. And these people are big, big fans. And if you could get a young version of Jim Kelly, you'll be beating a lot of teams, Jerry. So, interestingly, though, I said, I wonder what Jim's doing here. His daughter, Erin, crosses the goal line to you and today with you. So, Erin, stand up. Where are you, Erin? Where is Erin? Uh, congratulations, Erin. Congratulations. Graduating from Liberty. Great choice. Thank you. Liberty University is a place where they really have true champions. And you have a simple creed that you live by, to be, really, champions for Christ. Whether you're called to be a missionary overseas, to shepherd a church, or to be a leader in your community, you are living witness of the gospel message of faith, hope, and love. And I must tell you, I am so proud as your president to have helped you along over the past short period of time. I said I was going to do it, and Jerry, I did it. And uh, a lot of people are very happy with what's taken place, especially last week. We did some very important signings. Right, James? Very important signings. America is better when people put their faith into action. As long as I am your president, no one is ever going to stop you from practicing your faith or from preaching what's in your heart. We will always stand up for the right of all Americans to pray to God and to follow his teachings. America is beginning a new chapter. Today, each of you begins a new chapter as well. When your story goes from here, it will be defined by your vision, your perseverance, and your grit. That's a word Jim Kelly knows very well, your grit. In this, I'm reminded of another man you know very well and who has joined us here today. His name is George Rogers, Liberty University CFO and Vice President for a quarter of a century. During World War II, George spent three and a half years as a prisoner of war. He saw many of his fellow soldiers die during the Bataan Death March. He was the victim of starvation and torture as a prisoner of war. When he was finally set free, he weighed just 85 pounds and was told he would not live past the age of 40. Today, George is 98 years old. Great.
That's so great, George. If anyone ever had reason to quit, to give in to the bitterness and anger that we all face at some point, to lose hope in God's vision for his life, it was indeed George Rogers. But that's not what he did. He stood up for his country. He stood up for his community. He stood up for his family. And he defended civilization against a tide of barbarity, the kind of barbarity we're seeing today and we've been witnessing over the last number of years. And I just want to tell you, as your president, we are doing very, very well in countering it. So you just hang in there. Things are going along very, very well. You'll be hearing a lot about it next week from our generals. Things are going along very, very well. Through it all, he kept his faith in God, even in the darkest depths of despair. Like so many others of his generation, George came home to a nation full of optimism and pride and began to live out the American dream. He started a family. He discovered God's plan for him and pursued that vision with all his might, pouring his passion into a tiny college in a place called Lynchburg, Virginia. Did you ever hear of that, Lynchburg? We love it. We love it. Do you like it? We like it, right? I flew over it a little while ago. It's amazing, actually. What started as a dream with a few good friends, he helped shepherd into the largest Christian university in the world. Just look at this amazing, soaring, growing campus, and I've been watching it grow because I've been a friend of Liberty for a long time now, Jerry. It's been a long time. Thanks in great part to George's financial stewardship. Hundreds of thousands of young hearts and souls have been enriched at Liberty and inspired by the Spirit of God. George, we thank you and we salute you, and you just stay healthy for a long time, George. Thank you. Now it falls on the shoulders of each of you here today to protect the freedom that patriots like George earned with their incredible sacrifice. Fortunately, you have been equipped with the tools from your time right here on this campus to make the right decisions and to serve God, family, and country. As you build good lives, you will also be rebuilding our nation. You will be leaders in your communities, stewards of great institutions, and defenders of liberty. And you will be great mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers, loving friends and loving family members. You will build a future where we have the courage to chase our dreams no matter what the cynics and the doubters have to say. You will have the confidence to speak the hopes in your hearts and to express the love that stirs your souls. And you will have the faith to replace a broken establishment with a government that serves and protects the people. We must always remember that we share one home and one glorious destiny. Whether we are brown, black, or white, we all bleed the same red blood of patriots. We all salute the same great American flag. And we are all made by the same Almighty God. As long as you remember what you have learned here at Liberty, as long as you have pride in your beliefs, courage in your convictions, 
and faith in your God, then you will not fail. And as long as America remains true to its values, loyal to its citizens, and devoted to its Creator, then our best days are yet to come. I can promise you that. This has been an exceptional morning. It's been a great honor for me, and I want to thank you, the students. I also want to thank you, the family, for getting them there. And I want to thank and congratulate Liberty. May God bless the class of 2017. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless all of you here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Computer glitch earlier, the president has decided to stay to hear LU Praise perform. We've come this far by faith like they did at the inauguration. Go ahead.
Okay. All right, if you would all be seated, it is my privilege now to present the degree candidates for the class of 2017. Candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, Juris Doctorate, Doctor of Ministry, Doctor of Nursing Practice, Doctor of Business Administration, and Doctor of Worship Studies. Would you please stand to be recognized? All right, you may be seated. Candidates for the Education Specialist and Master of Theology degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, congratulations. Candidates for all other master's level degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, please be seated. Candidates for all bachelor's level degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, please be seated. Candidates for all Associate of Arts degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, please be seated. Candidates for all undergraduate certificates, graduate certificates, the Graduate of Theology and the Bible Diploma, please stand to be recognized. You may be seated. Liberty University Online Academy candidates for high school diplomas, please stand to be recognized. The graduating class of 2017, will you all please stand? All right, remain standing, if you would please, for the conferring of the degrees by President Falwell. The president asked me to convey that Secret Service needed to get him out here before the crowd exited, but he sends his apologies and he said he had a wonderful time here today. But on, on this, we're so honored to have him up here. But on this commencement day, you stand in a new relationship to Liberty University a university that now looks upon you as its sons and daughters. This institution has succeeded if you have learned here the ability to think critically, utilizing not only man's store of knowledge and wisdom, but God's wisdom in making life's decisions. Today, you will experience a new freedom, but with that freedom comes new responsibilities. We trust that your education at Liberty University has prepared you to enjoy that liberty to its, full, to, to its fullest and to accept those responsibilities without fear. You have a high and noble calling and you have a finely tuned guidance system, the Holy Spirit of God. Never again on this earth will we be assembled together as we are today. As you leave, you will go into all walks of life, to all corners of the world, carrying with you the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you do, you should not find satisfaction with the commonplace in character, attitude, or values. By your example, you should raise the intellectual and moral tone of society. Throughout the years, we will hear reports about you, but only eternity will, will reveal the full impact of your lives and your education at Liberty has had upon this world and the world to come. It is our prayer as you leave this campus that you will have a full life based upon faith in and dependence upon Almighty God, personal integrity, and respect for your fellow man. We hope that however far your journeys may take you, that they will bring you back to this campus 
to which you will always belong. And presenting you now to receive your degree, degrees, we charge you to live a life of devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ and dependence upon the Holy Spirit for strength, direction, and growth. In testimony of your conduct and purpose, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University and upon the recommendation of the faculties of the university, I hereby confer upon you the degree of the university with all the rights and the privileges appertaining thereunto. You may now move your tassels. Last night we had one of the best baccalaureate service I can remember in many, many years. And Dr. Reverend James Robison brought the keynote address. I've asked him to close the ceremony today in prayer. So please welcome Reverend James Robison. Congratulations to all of you. And all of you here, aren't you grateful that we have a president who will not be intimidated or manipulated by any form of political correctness or by a biased media that so often is far more than fake news, it is deceptive news and an assault and a distortion of all truth. And I am praying to God that this president will be held up with so much prayer that he will lead us and defend the principles upon which freedom was established and must stand. I thank God for him. Did you know in the Old Testament, most of the kings had a prophet in their ear. Many of them were not invited back for the second meeting. Some were not invited for the first meeting. We have a president Dr. Farwell, who has invited pastors, priests, and prophetic voices into his life. And frankly, I'm not certain he would have been president of the United States had it not been for President Jerry Falwell praying for him and letting us know that he had strengths many had not seen. Would you say thanks to God and thanks to Jerry Falwell? Join me in prayer. Father, I am asking you to put a shield of protection around our president, vice president, our national leaders. Protect their family and direct their steps. And I ask you to pour out upon all of these graduating students and those families that supported them and inspired them and encouraged them I pray you will have a direct line of communication to their hearts and minds where they will hear the truth that lifts its voice in the public square. They will hear the still small voice and they will heed the leadership of the Holy Spirit you sent to indwell us, to enable us. And I pray, dear God, that you will pour out your manifest blessings on this nation. And as we so often pray, God bless America. I am praying America will once again bless you by loving you with all of our heart and loving our neighbor. And I pray, dear God, that you will be so lifted up in our individual lives and in the body of Christ, the beautiful family of believers, so that we will actually look like the children of the perfect Father. When we go out of here this day, I pray we'll go out of here understanding that we have been given a great commission to be witnesses to the ends of the earth, but beginning at home in Jerusalem, where we reside, to our neighbors and our friends. And I pray, dear God, that you will give each one of us the courage and the compassion and the conviction to be consistent witnesses for Christ 
because we know the only hope we have is the transforming power of the gospel. If we have perfect laws, they will not be obeyed by lawless hearts, not even the perfect Ten Commandments, until the power of your transforming truth changes their hearts and minds for here and now and eternity. And may we together say, Thy will be done, because your kingdom has come in us, and to thine be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to extend.